Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to English class. I hope you had a nice uh, weekend. Um, so we just finished <clears throat> we just finished the read aloud of the Thief of Always, and we'll do this read aloud at the beginning of class uh, every day of the week, and we will finish just before the end of the unit. Okay, uh, so the read aloud will be something I refer to often in our mini lessons. And it's something that I encourage you to read uh, on your own at home, and I'll be giving you some more information about that in a little bit. Um, first, let's talk about what the fantasy genre really is. Okay? Uh, often we think about uh, fantasy as magic, right? And I know um, with the, the fame of, of Harry Potter, uh, fantasy, a lot of what we think about fantasy is uh, you know, wizards and, and witches and magic wands, things like that. Also, things like werewolves and vampires. Um, and also, Ratlin Rhino over here. So, I, I made a new version of him. Uh, but, fantasy is also stories like this here, Charlotte's Web. Right, so we're going to define the fantasy genre or a fantasy story as one that has at least one thing that could not occur in our world. So in Charlotte's Web, we have the talking animals. Right? So fantasy often includes magic, other worlds, special characters, talking animals, and universal themes. Okay, so what the authors do is use these fantasy elements to convey a lot of the same themes. And we'll see the struggle between good and evil. We'll see how power corrupts. We'll see the quest to be better than we are. And we'll also see how even the smallest of us can affect what happens in the world. And often what we see in fantasy is that the fate of the entire world kind of rests on the shoulders of the, of the main character and the choices they make. Okay, so these are some things just about the, the genre. Now for us and you, as you get into your books today, we need to think back to the beginning of the beginning of the year when we talked about what to do when we start a book. So our goal today is to read closely at the start of a book asking what kind of place is this? And we're going to look for clues about the setting and magical elements using the cover, blurbs, and details from, from the beginning of the text. So here I have the cover of The Thief of Always, and it looks uh, kind of nice on top and horrible on the bottom. Uh, I see the author's name and this, this big house. It looks like a wooden house. It's got some creepy windows, and it looks like it's emitting a yellow light. Uh, I see a stairway that goes down into like a forest that turns into this kind of demon's face with a big smile and big teeth. Okay, then I have the title, The Thief of Always, and a fable. So as the reader, I'm thinking there's some kind of demon in the woods. There is a house. Things are going to go on in this house. I'm not real sure what. I don't know if they're good or bad. Uh, it doesn't look like it's super scary, but I'm not sure. Okay, so as the reader, I've got these ideas in my head about what I might expect just from the cover. So now I'm going to look on the first few pages and I see I see uh, praise for the thief of always. Okay, and I'm going to skim through here and look for things that might help me learn about what the story is about or um, characters in the story, anything that will help me um, get some ideas in my head about what to expect. Okay, so when I look here I see uh, disturbing, intriguing, refreshingly comic. All right, so I gotta, I'm thinking to myself, it might be a little scary, but also funny. And The Maestro of Dark Fantasy. 
So this makes me think I should check out more about this author. Maybe this author, maybe this genre is the author's kind of specialty. Um, maybe they write uh, more than just books for middle school students. So maybe I'll, I'll look in, look into the author and see, see what he's like. If I skim through, I keep going. Swift and vigorously told. Okay, so this makes me think. I can expect action right away. Uh, I keep looking here. Here it says, The Thief of All Ways is a lean fable for readers of all ages dealing with the taking of magic and the giving it back. It's pretty wonderful. All right, so here I got some ideas about um, something in the plot. So the taking of magic and giving it back. So I'm going to remember this, and as I read, I'm going to be looking for things that connect to this idea. So the next page I have this guy here. He's the guy from the cover. Looks kind of scary. Looks like he's jumping. And then we get into the book. So... What I'm going to do, and what I'd like to see you do today as you read, is use this kind of T-chart to track what you learn about the setting and what you learn about magic in your story. Okay, just like that. Okay, so as I read, I'm going to be trying to fill this in and I'm paying attention to the details because I know they're important. I know that everything an author does is intentional. So let's try the first page together. Okay. The great gray beast, February, had eaten Harvey Swick alive. Here he was, buried in the belly of that smothering month, wondering if he would ever find his way through. His way through the cold coils that lay between here and Easter. So... I gotta say that's a exciting way to start a book. The main character has been eaten alive by the month of February. Okay, so I'm gonna write February down here so I know when it is. And I'm thinking to myself, what are my Februaries like? They're usually cold, it's gray outside, maybe some snow, maybe some rain, maybe a mix of it. It's just generally unpleasant. Okay, so that's how we start. He didn't think much of his chances. More than likely he'd become so bored as the hours crawled by that one day he'd simply forget to breathe. That maybe would people would wonder why such a fine young lad had perished in his prime. It would become a celebrated mystery, which wouldn't be solved until some great detective decided to recreate a day in Harvey's life. Then and only then would the grim truth be discovered. The detective would first follow Harvey's route to school every morning, trekking, from, trekking through the dismal streets. Then he'd sit at Harvey's desk and listen to the pitiful drone of the history teacher and the science teacher and wonder how the heroic boy had managed to keep his eyes open. And finally, as the, twisted, as the wasted day dwindled to dusk, he traced the homeward trek, and as he set foot on the step from which he had departed that morning, and people asked, as they, as they would, why such a sweet soul as Harvey had died. He would shake his head and say, it's very simple. Oh, the curious crowd would say, do tell. And brushing away a tear, the detective would reply, Harvey Swick was eaten by the great gray beast February. Okay, so... What I would add here... To my T chart is it's February. Harvey is our main character. Harvey, or he's a character. We don't know if he's the main character yet. He's Harvey Swick, and he is bored out of his mind. 
He's bored out of his mind. He's thinking of ways that boredom can actually kill him. Uh, so as I read through, I'm going to keep building this chart. And that, that's what I'd like to see you, to see you do today. And then when we have the share at the end of class, these are ideas that you can share with your book club. Okay, so I will see you in conferences.